very much for the opportunity. I'm going to ask a few quick questions to also warm us up late afternoon in San Francisco, which is surprisingly sunny, by the way, outside. It is uh, the first time that we've had sun in the afternoon in about 15 years or so. Um, <laughs> but um, a, qu a couple of questions. So uh, has any of you ever competed in a crowdsourcing competition? One. Has any of you ever um, asked for a crowdsourcing competition to use the results? Okay, so let me, let me first quickly define what is crowdsourcing, and I'll talk a little bit more about what we are doing. Um, crowdsourcing for us is not freelancing. It's not, um, it's not just identifying one person out there that is outside of your company, bringing them in, and then they almost behave like an employee. That's not what crowdsourcing is. Crowdsourcing for us is, is addressing and accounting for those 3.4 billion people out there who are all driven by a few things. They want to do stuff based on, purely based on their interest. I already have a full-time job, and I want to do something else. I have a skill or a talent or something else. Interestingly, one of the, one of, um, we, we do a lot of data science and technology crowdsourcing. Our top competitor that we've seen over and over is this COP in Brazil, in actually Rio. You might, I don't know if he was in the Lochte case or not, but he was a COP in Rio, and he loves to solve data science problems. So he's a COP during the day or night, and in his free time, he solves data science problems. And he's not a freelancer that a company has picked up to say, now I want you to solve this problem. Crowdsourcing for us is you put a challenge out there and you have uh, the entire data science community actually solving that challenge, and only one or two or three people get to win it. Everybody else is competing because they want to compete, they want to compete against the best, and they want to solve a problem. And that is typically what we are, what crowdsourcing is for us. And I know in the next two to three days, there'll be a, you'll all be inundated with a lot of new technology and new concepts, and going by the old adage that we should, we should teach you how to fish. So we don't want to take you through hundreds of slides on what is crowdsourcing, different applications and use cases. We actually wanted to show you how it works. What we did is we, going by the theme of this conference, we picked up a topic of citizen, citizen engagement. By the way, we used hacking citizen engagement. It clearly didn't go through the Deloitte risk framework, so they would never allow us to use the word hacking next in about in the same slide area as Deloitte anywhere but we kind of like snuck it through. And so what we did is we, we asked a crowd of people, what would, what would you want an application to be if you want your government to hear you a lot more easily? Because right now the connectivity between citizens and government is during elections or once in a while when there is a, there is a, rep, there is a quick proposal on the desk, you vote for it once. Other than that, there's no real engagement, even though we are connected with our employers, our, our friends across the world, and, and we are more connected with Pokemons, but we're not as connected with our governments. So we asked the crowd, come up with an idea on how do you want to be better connected with the government? And then, based on that idea, we actually, we, right now we are at 103 ideas that are out there. You can tweet as well at SU Crowd Live, and you can see the, all the other ideas that are out there. We pick one of the ideas tonight, and that'll go into a design and development crowdsourcing exercise. So we, you take the same problem, break it up into two pieces, and have different groups of crowds compete for it. And we are actually doing that over these three days. We are finishing the first part today, and the second part actually goes into, into a design challenge. They take the idea, they come up with wireframes, they come up with mockups, and then we'll present the final, final designs on day two, on Tuesday. So you, the entire process of coming up with ideas and coming up with designs and actually executing on those designs will happen in three days. Typically, that process in a larger company takes a few months. And also, the good thing about doing it like this is we have about 100 ideas that we have, and you get to choose one. All the other 99 people don't get paid. The first and the only one person gets paid. So there's a natural uh, competitive element among all of us that crowdsourcing harnesses. And then the second, when we're doing our you know, rapid prototyping and designs, we typically, at this level of a challenge, we get about 30 different designs 
and you get to pick one or two, or you don't, ha you don't have to pick anyone. And that's the element of crowdsourcing, which is competing for the best outcomes and not paying people for the effort, which is the world has been organized around effort. Crowdsourcing is organized around outcomes. And that's the biggest difference that we see in why, um, you know, recently Eric Schmidt was asked the question, how do you see, define the next $100 billion business? Where do you think it's going to come from? And he had a pretty quick answer. He said, the next $100 billion business will come from the intersection of machine learning and crowdsourcing, which is the ability for the billions of the people to contribute their ideas, um, their perspectives, their data, and then an artificial intelligence or a machine learning actually mining that and coming up with, coming up with value. That's the next $100 billion company. It is not having R&D scientists sitting inside, um, inside, a, inside an office or for the government under a bunker and, and having them come up with beautiful solutions. It is using the crowd to come up with data, using the crowd to come up with ideas, using the crowd to solve those ideas, build those designs and applications, come up with the best data science algorithms, come up, optimize those algorithms. The crowd can do all of that right now. The problem is the crowdsourcing landscape is extremely scattered. We, have, we track about 275 companies that do crowdsourcing right now. All of them, all of them optimizing their little silos. If you go look at state of crowdsourcing, you get 15 different state of crowdsourcing reports that all of them talk about their own little element. So what we do at Deloitte Pixel and Deloitte is we, we understand all the 270 companies and then based on our client problems, we say, you need to use these different four crowds, these crowds in, in, in sequence or sometimes in parallel to come up to the right answer. Having consultants on your ground working in your office is not always the best solution. Many would say mostly not the best solution. But you know, using the crowd on an outcome-based approach, coming up with the answer that you get to pick the outcome, not you get to pay for the effort, that's where the world, that's where the world is going. Let's see a couple of ideas that came out. And the first one is my favorite by far. Of course, it uses the word Pokemon. The moment you say Pokemon, you become cool these days. Um, it's a Pokemon ripoff, rip and this is how they phrase the idea itself. Walk around the city capt capturing cute little citizen characters when you point out failures in city streets, broken windows, noise pollution. It's almost as a making people your force of identifying what's wrong with the city versus using extremely stretched city budgets or government budgets to identifying those issues. Now, if you're able to take that kind of an idea, and, and gamify it and make people as interested as they are with Pokemon, you now have a citizen force walking around on streets and playing Pokemon, but there's a, there's a, there's a good end coming out of it at the end, which is they're, 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 they're solving city problems as well, which is a great benefit for both of us. It's a great benefit for the city, and it's a great benefit for the community. Now, thinking about these types of ideas of how to use the crowd in a way that they're having a lot of fun and the city is getting something back. In the same way, now you can also think about the, the large companies trying to use these types of concepts and coming up with very different approaches. That's the, that's the magic of, of crowdsourcing. And then what we're gonna do next is, in the next couple of days, is we will take one or a few of those ideas and actually get it built out in the crowd. So we have a booth downstairs. At any point in time, come in, and then you can explore the ideas, you can explore the wireframes and the mockups and the designs that are being built out live, so you can see what's happening, and then we'll, we'll showcase the, the final outcome on Tuesday. So just wanted to give you a quick introduction of what's going to happen over the next few days, and we are out there for you to come in and interact with us anytime. Thank you.